My name is Wiley J. Davis. I was born along a river, what they call the Chattahoochee, down south in Alabama, right close to Abbeville, Alabama. And my dad belonged to Chattahoochee chopping cane. The only thing you could do is shake peanuts, chop cane, pick cotton, and that kind of stuff. And you were sharecropping. So my dad was sharecropping for this man, and he cutting the cane, and the, the man booted him, and they got in a fight. And then my dad left. And no one saw my father for eight years <coughs> during that period of time down in Alabama. And I never saw my father until I was grown. My mother, after that, my father left, my mother moved to a small town called Eufaula. In this small town, my mother had a, a one-room bedroom apartment, like, and I was five years old. And my mother's sister's husband came by one night. And he wanted to talk, so they got to talking and everything, and he raped, he raped my mother. I was five years old when my mother got raped. Later on, my mother worked at a place called the Box Factory, to make boxes and stuff like that. And later on, she cut her hand and she couldn't work no more because she was too nervous. She, she couldn't get over that, that her sister's husband raped her. <coughs> and during this particular time, I was growing up, I became, I was about six or seven years old. One of them and one of my friends wanted to go to the movie. So I went in my mother's pocketbook and got five dollars out. And we went to the movie. The movie cost 10 cents, I think it was. So we got the 10 cents and we got the popcorn for a bunch of cents, 50 cents. And then I come back and I put the money back. <laughs> she got home and so my grandmother said, don't bother. You didn't give him the money. <laughs> he took it. <laughs> and after, after that, uh, my mother after she cut her, she cut her hand at the box factory, so she couldn't work no more. So my grandmother built a house on the back and put her in the room, in a big room by herself, and she took me and kept me up front with her. During this time, I was about seven, eight years old, and as time went along, I became a little bit older, and when I got turned 13, uh, my grandmother, she worked for the mayor of my hometown. And he told her everything that he told his kids, he told her to tell me. So he told us, Annie, they want you having to go to the golf course. And he gets 75 cents. He gets 40 cents for the first round and, and, and 35 for the second. And he'll make him some money. He'd go out there in the evening, 1 o'clock. And so I went out there and I started caddying. And we used to go out there every, what was it, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I think it was, Sunday. And during this time, I grew up, became a young man. Well, I came, became a teenager. And when I turned 17, I got this girl pregnant. So my mother told me, she said, son, she said, you got this girl pregnant, you can't find no job around here. You'd be pump milling, saw milling, and cutting cane and picking cotton and shaking peanuts. Say, that's sharecropping. They're going to give you a little change so you can make it but and feed you, 
but you ain't going to make enough to live on unless you share crop. <laughs> so the man told her to tell me to go in the army. And at 17 years old, I went in the army. The first, when we first got there, they gave us a flying 20. $20 bill. And they say, you get your, buy, buy your wash ups and everything with that. And then we're going to give you some clothes. So we went to the commissary and got some, got our wash up soap and everything to wash yourself with. And then I spent $10. All the rest of them spent their flying 20. And then when he came back, he told, told me, he said, hey, you still got some money? I said, yeah, I got $10. Well, we spent all the hours, we spent 20. Said, well, why don't you lend me five? I said, I'll lend you five, you give me 10 back. <laughs> and that was about during, during that time. I don't know what made me say that, but I did. And from that point on, I started lending money. <laughs> I started saving my money and letting them money. So I made money doing that. And then I, we, we had training. We had basic training. And then once I finished basic training, they sent me to Fort Bliss, Texas for advanced training. And the advanced training, I was in the artillery, ACAC artillery. We find big guns at planes. Five of us were, were, were on one gun. And then they sent me to Korea. In the Korean War, during that time, this, this, this was in 1954, and then in 55, the Korean War ended. And I was, I, I was over there during that time, in Korea, sitting on the top of a mountain, firing at ICAC aircraft. I was with, with a, a ICAC outfit, what they call it ICAC, it, it, it's an artillery unit. During that time, I went to Korea three times in the 50s. And then in the, in the 60s, I went to uh, Germany. I went to Germany and then I came back, got married. I didn't get married, I had to pay child support. So my friend, girlfriend, she said, well, she said, if well, you ain't gonna marry me, I'm gonna marry somebody else. <laughs> Oh, I said, well, what can I say? I couldn't say anything. But the only thing I was doing, I was giving a child support. I made that allotment to see if you could make out allotment then, during that time if you had somebody you wanted to support. So I made out allotment to her. And I, we took care, I took care of her and the, the boy. And when she got married, I stopped their lobby. <laughs> to make a long story short, I was in a small town in Alabama. When I left there, I think from the time that I left at 17 years old, I went back about three times, three or four times, and I spent maybe a week and then go back to, to the military. From 1954 to 1960, I went to three times to Korea. In 1964, I went to Germany. I 
I trained, trained with the with the with the NATO forces in Germany. Trained with them. I was there for three three years and came back in 1967. From 1967 to 69, I was in a training outfit. I was a, a drill instructor. I went to drill science school. I was a drill instructor and I trained, trained uh, new recruits that came in. A long that time, 69, I, they, 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 they sent me to hmm, they sent me to Vietnam. Before I went to Vietnam, I saw my father for the first time in 1969. I went by, went by his house, but he was in a different house. His girlfriend was standing at that house. I went by his house and she said, oh, he, he don't live here no more. Oh, he lives in such, such a place. She said, well, who are you? I said, That's, he's my father. Oh, he didn't tell me you got a father. I said, well, that's my father. She said, well, let me get him on the phone. So she called him up and he came over. She didn't tell him who I was. He said, somebody from down south want to see you. So he came with his pistol <laughs> in his pocket. And then he come in there, and there I had a friend with me. She said, one of these boys is your son. Oh, yeah? He looked at me, he looked at the other boy, and then I said, you don't know which one of us your son? He said, got to be you, because you got a big mouth. <laughs> And that was the first time that I saw my father, so I spent about five days with him before I went to went to Vietnam. And from that time on, I never saw him again <coughs> until 1985. This was 69. I saw my father again in 1985. I was getting ready to go to go to Europe, go to Germany. After I saw him there, in 85, I saw him, and I was out of the army there. I did about 20 years in the military, and I was on my way to get a job at the Postal Service. And in 85, I saw him, and I had bought me a home up in Tacoma, Washington. And he came by, came up and spent a week with me. And he said, boy, you doing better than I'm doing. My father never gave me anything. He never did nothing for me. He come up and visited me that time. And I told him one other time before he passed away. In 85, the middle of 85, he passed away. He was 70, I think he was 70 years old, 10 percent. Along that way, I had a half-sister. And later on, I saw her. She came up and visited me on a boyfriend, and then I never saw them no more. And Never saw her no more until night, 2013. 2013, I saw my sister, and she came up and visited me. Day 30 days, and she went back. And then next time I saw her was. Next time I saw her, I think it would. Now I'm sitting here in 
my home in Fort Worth, Texas. I am 84 years old, born on 85. I'll be 85 in October. And with me, a picture of my youngest son and his three brothers. I have four boys. Travis, he's the youngest one. Wiley Jr., he's the second, he's the oldest. Uh, Renee Davis, he's the next one. And Larry Davis, he's the fourth. And beside them, I have my father, and he got four brothers. My father's name was Ike Davis, and his, my, his, his brother was Johnny, Johnny L., Mike, and Paul. And I have a picture on the beach there where my son and me and my wife and his family on one side, and then his wife family is on the other side. So that's on the beach. I have another picture with them taken in my backyard. That's up here where the family is together. So we is a pretty close family. So right, right, right now I'm going to have to cut it off. And Thank you for watching today.